watching Digging Deep, and uh, today's video is just going to be on the uh, notorious uh, Tours Delete system on these Banshees. Um, I'm going to show you how easy it is just to unhook it if you want to uh, alleviate it on the electronic side, and then we're going to show the process of actually removing the Tours um, uh, boxes on top of the stock OEM carps. Um, we already had the kit in. Um, I had ordered that off eBay, um, but anyhow, uh, it's uh, just going to be the process of diving into this. I know there's a couple other videos out there on this, but I thought, oh, what the heck, maybe I'll show like the wiring and do the tours delete all in this video. So let's dive into it. Guys. If you look closely, you can already see I clipped off the wiring um, to the tours delete system. Um, it has its own uh, dedicated control unit. Once we remove the gas tank, I'll show you that. Um, so basically you can unplug that, snip the wires. I left tails on mine. I don't know why anybody would ever want to put these back uh, on a Banshee, maybe for originality, um, but maybe they'll sell on eBay, I don't know. Um, if not, they're gonna go in the trash, but I did leave some tails on there just in case. Um, there is any kind of resale value to them, but I don't think that there really is. So let's jump into removing this tank and I'll show you all the uh, tours related uh, wiring we can alleviate. I want to apologize again for the poor lighting. That, that's going to get better in the future. But basically what the um, a tour system does, it's a throttle override system. And basically it uh, will cut the engine off for protection. And um, so uh, I guess if the slides go out of whack one way or the other, I, I think it uh, protects from any in engine damage or um, high revs. I think it'll cut, cut that off. So it's pretty much a control box uh, to do that. And they just have, they're, they're problematic. That's why everybody gets rid of them. They're big and bulky and get in the way when you're trying to remove the carburetors. And um, th they've been known to malfunction a lot. Um, and basically, if you're, you're running your bike and it, it just stumbles and won't rev, a lot of times it has something to do with the tour system. Um, it's in protection mode or um, even having a malfunction to not allow it to run right. So that's why it's the most common reason why people are uh, eliminating these. All right, that being said, we're gonna remove these carburetors and start the process. But um, yeah, so that wire, these wires just run through the uh, um, wire harness and they will go back um, to right here and then loop around into the control unit up to the throttle switch. Um, that's how that's wired. So pretty simple guys. Let's get these carbs off. I'm gonna give you some real valuable information right here. Um, so if anybody does these carbs, you put your slides in, which they'll slide right in there. You could have the one slide in the wrong carb and the other carb vice versa. And it'll go right in there. Um, I'm used to single carbs. I have, I've, I've done like uh, Raptor 660 carbs. Um, this is my, I'm, I'm more of a single carb guy. Like I'll work on boat engines, a little bit of everything. And I try to, I try to stay to where I do small engine work where it's single carb. But I mean, I, 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 I'm starting to dabble into uh, dual carb systems, sinking the carbs, all that stuff, but I don't know how far I'll go. Anyway, long story short, you can swap these around on the slides. Now, if you had a single carb, um, you couldn't go on any because your, your slide won't match up, but these will go back and forth uh, from one carb to the other, which will not be right. And a good rule of thumb is to not mix them up. One, two, if you look really closely, there is a synchronized um, glass, which mine is really, really foggy. Um, but you can't you can't really sync the carbs up too well by looking at the slides. But that notch on the uh, the slide itself should line up. You got to remember that that notch goes on this side, and if my slide doesn't fly all over the place because I'm missing the clips here. I'll show you. And yep, it did. It definitely did, but that's okay. And the cards will work without that little pin, but I, I highly suggest you guys get them. Once, once you get the slides in there, they won't malfunction. And um, 
Anyhow, look closely here to the slide and you see that little indentation. You want that to line up with that little clear, clear uh, glass screen right there. So that dimple, that's how you sink the carbs, guys. Like if you don't have, um, if you don't have an actual uh, vacuum gauge to, to sink the carbs, um, that's the way it, it shows you to do it, I believe, in the service manual. And that's the way you do it and get them um, dialed in uh, without doing it that way. But if you put these in the wrong ones, it will run way rich. And I found that out and I kept telling myself, what is going on? I kept pulling them and going down the main jet size, kept going down another size and another size. It was still way rich and I couldn't figure it out. Basically what it's doing is choking the carb out because of that little, um, that little kind of arc there is... Uh, supposed to be on the intake side so if you got that backwards guess what it's cutting all that off with that straight edge there and basically like choking out the carburetor even more and make it run extra rich um ask me how i know but i wanted to throw that in there just to help you all out um if anybody's maybe stumbles across this video and they're wondering why they put it back together and it's running crazy rich that's why let's get these carbs off All right guys, next step, we're gonna start tearing these carbs down. We're gonna take, um, drop everything out of the, the bowls, fuel, air screw, um, main jet, all the, all the interior components um, as much as possible because drilling this out, you're definitely gonna make a mess inside the carb and you'll have to clean it very thoroughly to make sure you don't get any little metal, uh, metal particles in there. So guys, I think a common mistake is uh, guys getting these carbs off and drill on the wrong side and then you won't be able to get to it. It'll still work, I believe, but you won't you won't be able to access it if it's on the inner uh, portion of these carbs. So we're gonna drill on the choke side. Uh, I, I, I just look at it like this. You see these clamps right here? Those clamps right there are the side that you wanna drill. So let's get into it, guys. So I tore down the carb all to about there. That's everything I tore out there. Drop the bowl, all those other goodies. This here, if you look closely, it is uneven. If you look very closely there, it's uneven. So we wanna get like a grinder, whatever you wanna use to straighten that out. I don't know, and take take it down about two millimeters or so. And then, uh, and then we can go into the drill and tap process. I'll show you the basic stuff. But that's what it's going to look like. You want it pretty flat. I'm just going to take that down. And what I used was a little sand pad, a little uh, 90 degree air tool. So, guys, this is just an eBay kit. Um, it's nice about these. Make sure you get the one that has the full kit. They, they weren't that much. If I think about it, I'll drop the link. But it comes with the drill, the tap your carburetor caps and your aisle screws so everything you need and then you can't forget the cables of course so let's get into uh drilling this out and then we'll move into tapping it out all right guys so i got the handy dandy drill bit that they gave you in the kit we're going to hit this with a little bit of lubricant it probably would be just fine without it because it's not much to drill and basically to make this not a straight drill you'll have to get on the bind and you'll feel it so you almost can't mess this up guys but uh, good luck to you but uh, try and keep this in as straight as possible I'm just gonna palm it and um, I always hate drilling towards my hand even though I know there's no physical way unless I'm a blooming idiot to, to get a whole way through the car but it still uh, makes me paranoid because I've seen a lot of accidents in my short life span and we already went through guys and I'm just gonna ream it just a little bit real easy 
and and that's it guys you want to run the inside of your finger in there and see if you feel any imperfections and I'm not really feeling much but I'll probably take some like 320 and and go in there and buff that out I'm gonna do this in the drill on one um, it's gonna bring the torque up a little bit which you got to be careful with but I'm mainly want to slow it down and just um, and, and let the tap do the work I would recommend absolutely doing this by hand. So um, mimic what I'm doing at your own risk, guys. So let's see how we do. Uh, we're gonna make sure this is just nice and easy run this tap in here. Just like you're running it by hand. And with it already being a drilled out area there, um, if it was just an open hole I was tapping, I would not be using this drill, but it, it gives you a lot of guidance once you start to tap through there. So just take it real easy. I'm gonna go back a little bit. Just like you would be using your hand, it's just gonna speed the process up just ever so slightly. So hopefully you guys got a good enough view there. I'm sorry my bench is crazy mess. I've been going long and hard at this Project Banshee, guys. And we're about through and then I'm just gonna reverse it you might not have to do it that slow but I like being careful because you stock Makuni carbs aren't cheap guys look them up they are definitely not cheap you can get yourself some Chinese ones if you'd like but I don't recommend it all right guys I'm gonna run it through one more time here Nice and easy. The start is where you gotta be careful. I think the tap ran a little bit further this time. And we are coming through. All right. I'm gonna bring your tap out, nice and easy like. And that's it. I hit it with some compressed air, and then we're gonna try to run this uh, throttle screw in here, guys. And I separated, you know, from making my mess from over there to over here, so I don't have to worry about any metal metal particles getting in or around any of my jets and stuff over there. I do got a little bit of a bindage there, so I'm gonna run the tap through again, and we're gonna um, chase these threads down here. I got her this time. Had a little bind towards the end there. Pulling with that jam nut all the time um, to put some blue Loctite on there. So I'm going to try that out, guys. And uh, I'm going to shoot on to the next carp here. That's going in. Perfect. So that's good. All right, so I'm going to put some blue Loctite on here. I'm going to charge my battery for a little bit, guys, and we'll be back in here. All right, so while I was waiting for that thread locker to set up a little bit, I went ahead and pulled the old cable out. And what I did, guys, I went ahead and just cut it and got it out and it saved me a lot of time. Um, so you just route it down through here and then through here and then I'll have it right here um, waiting to put my carb caps on. So I went ahead and did all that off camera. Pretty simple guys, shouldn't be very hard for you. Good luck with it, I'm sure you'll be just fine. Got our idle screw in the side there. I got it out way too far, that's fine. Um, so upon examining inside where we took the hole um, through at, I did have a little burr um, on the uh, carb there, but you can see it just barely nubbing out there on the side there. And um, all I did was um, I tried sandpaper on a finger a few times and getting in there and just to uh, knock that piece down. What I ended up doing is just taking my screwdriver in there and poke and kind of push in on the little uh, piece of metal that was sticking up and it broke right off and then I just hit it with some sandpaper again and just make sure it's really smooth in there. Don't go too coarse guys, um, maybe like 320, 320, 220 should be fine. I think that's what that may be. Um, but yeah, we're ready to assemble this thing. I done um, hit it with the air compressor and uh, just parts cleaner here and we're going to assemble this thing and then we'll be back in here when we get the uh, other carb ready to go. I'm on one carb at a time. I'm just, uh, <laughs> I'm a mess right now and I'm just limited on areas. So I don't want to get stuff uh, mixed up here 
and uh, just do one carb at a time, guys. But I'll get back in here. Um, I'm going in to put some boots on. It is freezing out here. My feet are cold. Um, my heater's a little rich and it's making my eyes burn. So I'm definitely going to have to work on that. But anyhow, we'll get this back together and then we're going to start uh, working on the other carb. All right, guys, we're going to disassemble this carb. Um, ain't no difference other than it has the choke plunger on the side. And we just want to keep in mind that that will be the side that we want to taper that down flat. If you look close, there's a weird taper on there and we want to flatten that up and take about a millimeter to two millimeters off and it will be good. So I wanted to make sure this footage was a little better than the first one. Um, <coughs> so I flattened that off. This one's a little bit more challenging to get to. I, I nicked the side a little bit right there. No big deal on this wet. But it's a little bit more challenging to get in there on that side. But uh, that's that's uh, that's a fairly flat, guys. I think that'll do the trick for us there. I see it's a little bit of a high taper back there, but I think that's gonna be good enough. That's pretty pretty flat, pretty true. It doesn't have to be, you know, straight as a razor, but definitely better than what it is on the stock cards with that taper to them. So get a little shot of WD. Double check and think about your side. Now let's start the drilling process here. Hopefully this is a little bit better angle for you guys. See, I grabbed right there, right off the back. So that just tells me I was a little cattywampus there. But that tubular uh, insert there, that tubular pipe there, makes it real hard not to be straight. So. And guys, it don't take much to get through here, and you will be right into the back wall of the carb. So just take it nice and easy if you don't want to damage the uh, the other uh, side of the carb. As you can see, we're cutting pretty good. Probably about ready to come through here. Let's see if I got a tip of a drill coming through yet. Uh, no. Nope. I know we got to be getting close. I just want to be a little bit softer this time when I'm going through. There we go. Bring it out a little bit. Don't go too crazy on the ream because you could be going back and forth and you want to egg the, the inner portion of that hole out um, for tapping pur purposes. So. All, right. All right. Get in there and clean your metal out there a little bit. And then we're ready for the tapping uh, process here. I done shot some WD-40 in here. Any lubricant will work. Any oil will work. We're gonna take it nice and easy. Like I said before in the last clip, it's almost like you're just running it by hand. You're just using the drill to speed up the process a little bit. If it binds, back out of there and, and, and come at it again. You do not want to mess these threads up. I run it clean till I'm out of threads almost and then even a little more afterwards. Uh, just to make sure your tap goes completely through. I'm going to back it out because I was getting a little tight there. We're going to pull some of this metal out. See that metal flying out? You want to get that out of there if at all possible. And then, we're gonna, and then we're gonna hit it again, guys. It should go through even easier this time. 100%. If not, you got some issues. Alright. So we're not quite through there like I want to be. When you get to the end, it's gonna get a little bit tough coming through. And then just bring it back again. And I'm gonna go in. I definitely got some burr action here, I can see. So we're gonna have to clean that up. All right. So hopefully that shot came out better for y'all. So I don't know how well I can get the angle for you guys, but if you look, if you look into here, you can see the little burr um, where that came through. There's actually two, there's one up top 
and there's one on the bottom there so I'm going to kind of work it with a little tiny flat screwdriver um, and, and just see how hard they're on there and then I'll come through with some 220 grit sandpaper and clean it up alright guys I literally got in there with a the screwdriver and they came right off um, and check the back wall too it's probably not a bad idea especially if you know you blew through and hit pretty good it shouldn't be enough to really hurt anything but just make sure I can see where my bed even hit that one and I took it even easier um, but I'm not feeling anything really that's gonna um, hurt anything at all so um, I you know again just take the uh, sandpaper and go in there and just kind of make sure you sand it out well and make sure everything's nice and smooth that way we don't have no binding action on the slide oh man that's money dude all right guys for the most part i think the hard part is over on both carbs the other one's assembled and sitting back on the bike ready to go in just sitting over there I, um did i take that washer off oh, excuse me guys yeah i did i didn't remember that a little washer that goes up at the top there so um, we're going to take this um, idle screw out of our kit and we're going to see how it runs in there. Last time we had an issue, we had to ream it out uh, one or two more times, but uh, I have a feeling it's going to screw in there. Got a little, oopsie, I'm wrong, it is a little slow there, but do not force the threads because that's how you'll uh, booger up stuff especially that's brass <clears throat> aluminum too I mean but uh, just needed a little more <laughs> probably just a couple little particles in the threads there and it got caught up a little bit let's try it one more time and we'll make sure it's coming through yeah yeah looks good guys or if you guys can see that very well or not there but uh, there she is sticking out so all right, I'm going to save you all on the reassemble of the carburetor. I'm sure there's plenty of videos out there that shows um, how to tear these carbs apart. Um, but we're just going to keep to uh, what it takes to install the tour system or do the tours delete. All right, she's good and clean. Get this thing reassembled. And we'll get it back on the bike. All right, guys, we got the caps ready to go here. If you ever have trouble, guys, with those air rings dropping out, and trust me, <coughs> you will curse um, when you're about to put it in place and they fall down on the spring because once that happens, it's a pain in the butt. Um, you usually have to uh, take it back apart again. Take it back apart again, excuse me. But uh, <coughs> I, I do a thin coat of grease to keep those up in there good. That one was staying well, so I left that in the line. But we got the carbs in place, guys and everything's looking good i got them uh i got the clamps tightened down so now we're going to get the caps on carbs are in place so we're going to put our caps on here and get ready to set these slides down in here guys right, guys that's what it's going to look like when you drop that back uh down in there it's going to be so much better without these big bulky uh tours delete <laughs> uh boxes on top there so we're going to get this other one on, slide it down, and then uh, we're going to go over the adjustments and what we do, um, getting the bike just about ready to fire up. Um, so I'm going to have to resync these carbs um, once, once we get this complete too, because this is a whole different um, setup on the slides. You can get them pretty close. Like I say, my, the, the service manual that has those screens on the side, those little sight glasses, to see those dimples in the slide that's how you sync them up i think per the service manual not 100 percent but uh we're going to sync them up with the uh little vacuum gauge we got and i'm pretty sure um they're going to be off so we'll go over on how we do that hey guys here's the old ones on the bench they're just bulky and in the way hey weight savings too all right guys so <laughs> this is what it looks like man it's so much more room caps and everything are a lot less contrary um, and again I wanted to show you guys um, have your adjustments uh, all the way so you can have the most slack in your cable on top and bottom and then you can come back and tighten that up um, <clears throat> the slides I don't know how they look I gotta get a light make sure everything's uh, functioning properly uh, before you get too much further but I got a lot of 
a lot of play in this cable, a lot of free play, I believe. So we're gonna get in here and go step by step. Um, it sounds like the slides are hitting. So if you ever do this, guys, you wanna hear the slide hit the bottom of the carburetor, okay? And then you're gonna make, you're gonna just br barely bring the slide up from that. that but you, that's a good base point to, to hear that sound there to where your slide's making contact. And I apologize, this is gonna be the portion of the video is probably gonna go downhill because I need both my hands and I don't have my right camera mount with me, but they're not awful, but you can get them close, guys, um, just by visually looking. They're pretty close. So what I like to do is, you know, we got we got our idle screws. Well, that one's in a lot further than I thought. So we're gonna back them out. We're gonna back out the idle screw. We're trying to get them somewhat close. Um, so that one's backed out. I don't know why I left that one in. That's odd. That's why I want this one was picking up a little faster, a little hair sooner. I just had to put that line right there in my way. I'm gonna reroute that, guys. For now, we'll just pop that out of the way. So yeah, we got this out. And then what you're gonna do? See, we want to hear that. We want to hear that good snap. We want to hear that good snap. Um, and again, I apologize if this is not the best view in the world. We want to hear that good snap in those slides, guys. You definitely want to look for that. And then I'm going to start turning this in until I see some slide movement. Till we start to meet the slide. And if you look very closely, you should see it start to move. You should fill up with your hand, too. And we're going in. All right, I just made contact with the slide. And as I'm turning, it's starting to raise the slide. So make contact and let it go. Come around and do your other side, guys. Same thing. Same thing, we're gonna, trying to get you guys where you can see it. We're gonna get on this, uh, take it in. Gonna back our jam nut out. Jam nuts, a little, uh-oh. All right, guys, stand by. Um, I ran out of blue thread locker, and this is the thread lock that it did uh, dry up on me. Uh, the only, the only one I got it on. I'm gonna have to get some more. I'm gonna come back and do that for sure. But bear with me. I gotta get this jam nut backed out, and it's uh, giving me a hard time. Guys, we got our jam nut backed out. Our idle screw is uh, definitely out far enough. So we're gonna take it. Make sure it's out far enough. And we're gonna to start to screw it in until you feel contact with the slide. And I just did. And I just started to move it up. So I'm gonna back it out again and make contact with the slide. And just as it's about to move it up. All right, and then from there, guys, a good base, a good base would be you're making contact with the slide, you're bringing it up. So that's the point um, where, you, where you're gonna uh, start to get the, get the bike into an idle. And what I'm gonna do is do about two and a half turns um, with these screws and leave it at that and hopefully the bike idles but it should be in the ballpark to where you can get down there quick with your uh, with your hand and uh, set everything up all right guys so we might have to take these jam nuts off I might not have took enough material off but we're gonna find out so from right here at this point I'm gonna go oops let me try that again once I'm gonna have to fill this with my hand guys forgive me a second here I have a feeling I'm gonna have to take these jam nuts out. Okay, so right here we're making contact. And then we're gonna go so we can get out of it. Half. One. One and a half. Well guys, <coughs> Let me see. Yep, that is pretty much maxed, maxed out on the jam nut, which leaves me no room, um, no room at all. So I'm gonna have to get some blue lock type guys and come back here uh, on this. And I like that. I like that idea better um, because it'll make it way easier, I think, to not be so touchy um, in the adjustments. So let me let me see if I can. Dig around here, guys. I'll be right back. All right, guys. So here's something to point out. Um, this one will work 
because I must have took more surface down and something to pay attention to. And it's probably good to take a little Sharpie when you're resurfacing um, where these go in at and, and know where you got to get, uh, take the surface into. But we I managed to get the very last couple drops of uh, blue Loctite on there. And we're gonna let that set up and then we're gonna go back to uh, getting these carbs ready to go. Looking pretty good here, everything's in. Um, <coughs> Now, with using the blue Loctite idea is awesome, I think, great idea. The only downfall of that is, I like how you could feel the idle screw easily touch uh, the slide and know when you're right there to be kind of really precise with um, setting up initially to, to feel when it hits the slide and then do your turns um, to get it really close um, to where it should idle upon fire, which, Blue Loctite just just fine, but it's hard to tell when you hit the um, throttle body or the th throttle side slide. Excuse me. Um, and that's the only thing I, I kind of would say it's not as good with a blue Loctite, but um, I think it's a great idea, and I'm kind of glad I did it because there will be no worries with it running in and out um, when you're out in the trails. So we're gonna get this thing out. So I did about I met the slide. You you take it into you fill the slide, and as soon as you start to see the slide barely itch up, maybe back it off till you know it's right there, and then go two and a half turns out um, on that idle screw, and that should get you in a ballpark figure. But guys, we're ready to get this tank on top of here and fire this thing up. The carb slides look like they're li uh, lined up pretty well. Um, I'm not saying they're not gonna need sync because they're most definitely probably gonna need synced up. But if you look, that left one's got a little bit of a, a jiggle to it first. So, and it looks like our left carb is definitely um, probably uh, opened up a little bit more than the right carb. But uh, we're going to get ready to fire this bike up. Hey guys, you fired right up. So we got them synced in. Um, it was very, very hard to do um, um, the upper adjustments with the throttle in. With the camera i do apologize i didn't do it but um, a little trick is to, to, just to hold the throttle in a little bit and just give it a little bump and try to keep it as still as possible and get them close that's what i was doing and then and then i have and then i took this cable out and you'll run the auto up and if you're doing this in the summertime um, you're probably going to watch have to watch heating it up so the jam nuts are a pain in the butt um, to get right and then you want to double check yourself and make sure you're still at sync on each carburetor so I think the blue Loctite is going to be a great idea for the upper ones as well. So we're going to uh, do that too once I get some more in. Um, but these carbs are synced up 100%. We finally did the tours delete. We got rid of those big bulky uh, tour systems off the top of the carbs. Um, so yeah, we're ready to get this thing back together. And uh, Project Banshee is going to be underway. And I'm excited to go out here and take some rips on this thing and hit the trails. I've had it out in the yard a couple times. Um, just partially together, just checking everything over. <laughs> I got smoke just rolling out of the shop here. But guys, I appreciate it. Um, uh, smash that subscribe button if you're, it's your first time in here seeing uh, the channel. Give me a like, give me a thumbs up, give me some suggestions. Uh, any of you guys that uh, probably know more than me with these banshees, uh, drop, drop me a comment, give me, give me some ideas. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting out on the trails with you guys and uh, thanks for watching Digging Deep and we'll catch you next time.